cover the twins. If they get through this night, they'll be all right. Pray for them, Joseph. You're sicker than they are. the reverend's wife. Why help me? I don't know if you're a prophet of God, but I've seen the devil's work tonight.
rich land of America gave hope for the working people. But for Brigham Young, it was not enough. For these were years when the newfound freedom created an atmosphere of conflicting political and religious beliefs. You better find God before it's too late. Where do I look? It's all around you. You can just pick and choose. And the filth of man shall rise and stink to the heavens. And the beasts of the forest shall feed upon your flesh. So it is written, and so it shall be. Change, ye miserable sinner. Change. 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 The Lord smiles down on us. Under his divine guidance, we prosper, and our possessions multiply. Our farm shall yield rich harvests. Our barn shall burst with bounty. For we are the righteous, those who are poor and suffering. This is your punishment for not being true. What kind of church is this you're bringing me to? This is the way they do it. I want to talk to God. Are you crazy? God ain't going to talk to you. Except in Jesus. Moses was the last one he talked to. And you ain't no Moses. How do you know Moses was the last? How do you know God ain't right outside the cabin just waiting to be spoke to? God lives in Jerusalem. The Bible says he's everywhere. He's got a point, Heber. Well, if God's outside, let him come in. <laughs> and if I be no better than my ox, and he be a fine beast, then please, God, tell me so. Tell me I'd be just an animal, and I promise I'd be content to live alongside my brother Ox, and we both be a pair of happy beasts. But if a man be different than the beast, and if you think I'd be a man, then tell me so. I've got to know who am I, God. I ain't asking for special favor. I ain't asking for your blessing. I got no right to ask except for how should I live? I got no money, no trade, no special skill. All I got is the days of my life. How do I make them mean something? Help me, God. I just got to know you're there. Well? There's something here. What was that man's name? Joseph. From where? Kirkland. Ohio. you my way is better you know people look at me and they say for a man who claims to be a prophet of god you're mighty rough cut you don't have much polish about you well i'm like a huge rough stone rolling down a mountain the only polishing i get is when a corner gets knocked off by striking against something else something like religious bigotry priestcraft lawyer craft 
Dr. Kraft, lying editors, lying judges, lying politicians who are backed by mobs, blasphemers, and licentious and corrupt men. By striking against them, I rub off a corner here and a corner there until one day I shall become a smooth and polished shaft in the quiver of the Almighty. But the government of men has been productive of nothing but misery, destruction, and wickedness. Nation has succeeded nation, and we have inherited nothing but their folly. But I see no faults in the church, and therefore let me be resurrected with the saints. Friendship is one of the grand fundamental principles. Friendship is like Brother Turley in his blacksmith shop, welding iron to iron. It unites the human family with its happy influence. I love that man better that swears the stream as long as my arm, yet deals justice to his neighbors and mercifully deals his bounty to the poor than the long, smooth-faced hypocrite. I don't care what a man's character is. If he's a friend to me, a true friend, I will be a friend to him and preach the gospel of salvation to him. Welcome, brother. No two men could have been born further apart. Joseph knew it would take a simple but strong man to keep his dream alive. In Brigham Young, he found the right man. Joseph was a prophet. Brigham was a farmer, a stonemason, a carpenter, a pioneer. To carve a new nation in the wilderness, it would take the strength of both men. We know that God is true, that the Constitution of the United States is true, that the Bible is true, that the Book of Covenants is true. We know that the ministering angels sent forth from God are true, that Christ is true, and that we know that we have a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven, whose builder and maker is God. Did you enjoy the sermon, Marianne? All week I look forward to Sunday. Isn't it a wonderful day? Oh, I like every day. Oh, so do I, but Sunday the most. Don't you agree? Oh, yes, I agree, Marianne. How long has it been since your wife died? Two years. I wonder if I'll ever marry. You could marry me. I heard your first wife was beautiful. She was. But so are you. I'm building a new house. It's too big for one person. Don't you have friends? I want a wife. When can I expect your answer? As soon as I know my mind. I'm an open book, Mary Ann. What more do you have to know? I'll have to ask God. Ask him. Here? Here and now. Go ahead, ask him. Dear God, is it your will I should become the wife of Brigham? Today I got up at 4.30, fed the chickens, looked after the pigs, milked the cow, and chased some rabbits out of my cabbage patch. Went to church and had a good talk with Brother Joseph. I also got me a wife, Mary Ann Angel, a good woman. Too bad I have to leave for Canada in the morning.
way we go our separate ways, Brother Brigham. Do you feel like a missionary, Brother Heber? I just feel a little hungry and a little lost. But Brother Joseph said, Lord will provide. Lord, start providing. something place to stay the doors are made to knock on I've been kicked out of so many doors lately I figured I better look in the window first kind of be late to looking in windows isn't it I mean you know harm. you don't scare me can you spare a meal why didn't you say so another load. Have you come a long way? My wife asked you a question. Yes. You are hungry. Only the poor have room for one more. Those that set their dogs on me, they were poor enough. What do you do? Carpenter, painter, window fitter. You need work? I am working. Well, then you can pay for this meal. I don't get paid for my work. Well, now, you don't look like a fool. Can't you see, Samuel? He's doing God's work. Preacher? Not exactly. Well, what then? I bring a message. I'd like to hear your message. I'd be a missionary. I gotta tend to the animals. My Samuel is not a religious man. Tell the truth, Claire. My Samuel does not believe in God. Tell it all. He thinks the clergy fatten themselves on the people as we saw them do in England, that they bind people down with superstition and do nothing to make their lives better. I don't believe there could be a God who would let us slave like we did in the Manchester mills. All around us, people starving and, and children dying of sickness. And all the while, the clergy driving by in their carriages. And all we have to do is have faith in Jesus Christ and all would be well. believe in Revelation, that God spoke to Moses? I suppose I do. That he spoke to Paul and the other prophets? Yes. Then why can't he speak to us today? I don't know. Isn't the Bible enough? I thought it was, till I came across this book. What's in it? Why is it so important? Read it. Study it. You'll see for yourself. What did it do for you? I was an animal. It made me a man. Come to God without deception. Your heart is right. It is the gateway into the church and the kingdom of God. I now baptize you by the authority of Jesus Christ and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. ever make her suffer. I'll find you, and I'll make you pay. Whoa! 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 
Hello there. Why, it's Samuel and Sister Claire. I persuaded my Samuel to move to Kirtland. Uh-huh. What are you doing? Moving to a larger place? Sort of. Say, do you know where Ralph Becker's farm lies? Just about a mile up the road. Why? We bought it by mail. Oh, no. Is there something wrong with the place? No, Becker has a real fine place. Bought it cheap, too. Wonder why he let it go for so little. He's leaving for Missouri. Well, we better get on down and take possession. And so are we. What's that you said? I'm leaving, so's Joseph, Heber, the whole church is leaving. Hey, you can't do this to us. We only moved here so Claire could be close to the church. How much did you pay, Brother Beckett? Why, every penny we scraped together, $100. I'll get it back for you. Then we can all go to Missouri together. Sister Claire, go on in the house. Marianne will fix you something to eat. Thank you, Brother Brigham. Well, suppose Becker won't give me my money back. What do I do then? He'll give it back all right. You don't know Brother Becker like we do. Brother Becker, you knew we were leaving for Missouri when you took that hundred dollars. And you knew the only reason he bought your farm was so his wife could live close to the church. Sure I did, Brother Brigham, but Samuel Rudley ain't one of us. He's a Gentile. Seems to me you, you got a problem, Brother Brigham. I'm going to shut my eyes. I think I'm having an inspiration, Brother Becker. When I open my eyes, I think I'm going to find a hundred dollars in the palm of my hand. If I don't, it means I had a false inspiration. I feel very inspired, Brother Becker. I'd hate to be disappointed. I'm mighty proud of you, Brother Becker. They were forced to leave their homes and move west. And West, in those early days, meant Missouri. Uh, you know why I hear tell they got plans of building a temple? From everywhere. Uh, we let them be, pretty soon they're gonna outnumber us, and then they're gonna outvote us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I told them to get away from any kind of religion. And they ain't going to shove it down my throat now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You drink not. They don't smoke, they don't cuss, they don't do nothing, they don't even gamble. All they do is work and make babies, and that ain't no kind of life for a man. Yeah, you ever see one of them spend nickel? They raise their own food to make their own clothes and to save every penny. Uh -huh. Now, this town is poorer now than it was before they come. Yeah, you can say a slave state. And you know... There ain't one single one of them that's got a slave of any kind. Now, ain't that something? Abolitionists. That's what they are. Yeah. I hear that they preach that the Lord done give them Missouri. They say they got an angel coming down here going to strike us all dead. And then they're going to give them our land. Well, wait for that angel, Charlie. Maybe they're going to speed up the Lord's plan themselves. You know they got a Bible that says the angels descended from the tribes of Israel? <laughs> Huh? Excuse oh, me, sir. Heated. No boys allowed. Excuse yeah. me, but do you have a letter for my father? What's your father's name? Brigham Young. Oh. I don't hear so good. Who did you say your father is? Brigham Young. Well, uh, have a drink, boy? No, thank you. Oh, no. You put hair in your chest. Yeah. Yeah. What's the matter with yeah. you, boy? Yeah. 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 Here, have a two. No, thank you, sir. Spit. Who's your best friend? An Who idiot? Nobody wants you Why here. Why don't you, don't you tell your man to get to hell on his own? Why don't you tell him yourself? Go get in the wagon, son. <laughs> I'm expecting a letter. Brigham Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I believe you have a letter for me. <laughs> a letter? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
A letter for Brigham Young. And that's you, huh? Yeah. Can I have my letter, please? <laughs> Brigham Young. Uh-huh. Don't see around here much, Mr. Young. <laughs> my work keeps me on the farm. On the farm. <laughs> <laughs> here you had a good crop. Yeah. Guess you made a few dollars. Yeah, made Can I sell you something? Not today, thank you. My letter, please. Got some real good cheap whiskey. <laughs> Fresh cigars. <laughs> coffee, tea. Around here, they call me Monk. You know why? Because they say I look like a gorilla. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, mister, let me ask you a question. Do you think I look like a gorilla? <laughs> Can I have my letter, please? I ask you a question, mister. What was the question? Oh, hell with it. Have a drink. No, thanks. <laughs> have a chew. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, no. I just want to be friends. Shake, friend. Did you get your letter, Pa? Take this. I told you to wait out in the wagon. Yes, Pa. Sure, I'll shake, friend. Get it, Mark. <laughs> So long. A lot of men wanted to shake hands with Pa. Good afternoon, friends. Sister Claire. Good afternoon, Brother Joseph. And a good afternoon it is. You've come to convert me. You're wasting your time. Today I'm paying you a social call. I'm glad to have you with us, friend. Got a new piano, Sister Claire. We'd like to have you come down tomorrow night and play it for us. Love to, Brother Joseph. You'll come too, won't you? If Mr. Smith doesn't mind. Call me Joseph. Joseph? Samuel. Well, we use the first names now. That's some progress. I just don't understand you. Shoot, Fred. How can you place all your trust in a God who permits all the misery we see around us? Free agency, Samuel. God will not force men to be good. He will not force goodness to gather men around him. Maybe there's not enough room in heaven, and a lot of us just won't make it. Well, I'm more concerned about this world. Well, I'm concerned about both. You should be, too. We'll work with you, same as any brother. Is that all you have to say? What have I left out? My Samuel was expecting a stiff fight. Oh, hellfire and brimstone, eh? To say the least. Well, next time, Samuel. Next time it shall be, Joseph. We will say grace now. Our Father in heaven, we express thanks for things we have. Our home, our food, our family. There's much we do not have, Father. But bless this food that it may strengthen us through the difficulties that surround us. Bless 
nutritious food that it may strengthen us. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Under the table, quick. Come out now.
and go to your home and let the Lord take care of it. Go on now. God bless you. Washington, the capital of America, the home of the Constitution that guaranteed all men are created equal and have freedom of worship. Hundreds of statements and affidavits detailing the legal wrongs of the state of Missouri against its citizens are horrendous. Mr. President, every paper on that table is a personal eyewitness account written by a victim or his survivors. And these crimes were perpetrated not by lone mobbers, but under the color of a state militia with written orders and their highest executive, Governor Boggs. Right. Mr. President, if the head of any state is to be permitted to persecute a segment of its population because they practice a religion not approved by the majority, then where is our freedom of worship, guaranteed sacred by the Constitution? Your demand for redress against Missouri is a just cause. But... But what, Mr. President? As President, I cannot interfere in a state dispute, however unfortunate. Besides, this is an election year. I can do nothing for you. If I do anything, I shall come into conflict with the whole state of Missouri. I, I'm afraid I have some very important meetings and appointments. Someday, Mr. President. You will have an appointment with someone far more important than anyone waiting for you now. I wonder how your answer will sound to him. Whoever it is, tell them we're closed. It's Brigham. I suppose you heard. I've heard. We could use a store like yours in Illinois. I like it here. We can supply oxen, wagons, and help you move. What makes you think it'll be any different in Illinois? Yeah, we can't stay here. There'll be bloodshed. The same thing could happen in Illinois. Why should they feel any different to Mormons than the folks here? You don't believe in anything, do you, Samuel? Winter is cold, and summer is hot, and rain is wet, and if I cut my hand, it bleeds. You only believe in things you can feel. Is that it, Samuel? That's it. And I read books, books of fact, not fairy tales like the Bible. Joseph says, if a person looks up at the night sky for five minutes, just looks and sees what's up there. Why, he'll know more about heaven than read never book that was ever written about it. Joseph is a good man. He's just trying to do too much, help the world, and, and change everybody. And he can't. And that's why he's always going to be in trouble. Then you'd want him to give up. It's his life. I just don't want to follow it. And you'll be staying in Missouri. Brethren, the saints must have a place of their own. And I have found it. Right now, it is just a malaria-infested swampland. Nobody wants this land. But I believe that we can drain that swamp. We can cut the brush and make it a healthy place to live. Through the blessings of heaven and the hard work of the saints, I consider it wisdom to build us there a new city, which we will call Nabu, which is a Hebrew term signifying the beautiful.
Good afternoon, Sister Claire. Good afternoon, Brother Joseph. And a good afternoon it is, Brother Samuel. I'm not your brother yet. You've got a fine store here, Samuel. Keeps me busy. What's the good word? It isn't. Folks in Illinois believe that church and politics should be separate. And Joseph keeps mixing them up. There's trouble coming. What else have we done wrong? There's rumors of polygamy. That Joseph had a revelation about plural marriage, and it's going to become church doctrine. Tell us the rumors are false. They are, aren't they? I'd sooner be carried off in a coffin than have to take another wife. There, you see? I told you it was a lie. You didn't deny it, Brigham. I know. It's all over town. Who's going to be your new wife? You choose her, Marianne. You choose her. I can't do it, Brigham. There can't be another wife. Good. Then I won't have to do it. Joseph said that the first wife must approve. I won't ask you to, Marianne. How's your day been? Oh. This is Lucy Brigham, Lucy Decker. I don't think you ever told me about her. Is she a relative? Well, sort of. She's going to be your new wife. New wife? Now, wait a minute. Don't I have anything to say about this? You never asked to. You said that only I must approve. Yes, but when I... She has three adorable children. Her husband passed away, and... We have so much room in the house. I'm sure we'll all be happy together. Amen. Amen. My porridge is cold. So's mine. It's not that cold, Papa. From what I've been hearing, you'd be wise to take precautions against your enemies. I, too, believe in trusting in the Lord. But a gun like this certainly makes prayers more convincing. It would be better to buy plowshares and raise corn. I'll take two. We've got to talk to you, Brother Joseph. What can I do for you, brothers? We've just been to a secret meeting at William Law's place. Dennis, Robert, you know why you were brought here? No, sir. You boys 
love your church, don't you? Yes, sir. That's why I know I can trust you. We got you rid of our church of its evil. It's a terrible evil that hangs over it like the devil. In fact, he is the devil. You think it's wrong to kill the devil? No, sir. You know we're all good men here, don't you? Yes, sir. Now hear this. I solemnly swear before God and all holy angels and my fellow brothers whom I am surrounded that I will give my life, my liberty, my influence, my all for the destruction of the Smith. So help me God. Boys, place your hand on that Bible and repeat after me. We can't, sir. You either take this oath or you'll never leave here alive. Then you'll have to kill us. Joseph isn't a devil. You are. We can't let them leave. What made you so sure they'd join us? Joseph has taken each of their sisters for his wives. You know that, don't you? Your sisters are part of his harem. My sister married him because she loves him. Abraham, David, Jacob, and Solomon had more than one wife, and they were good men. Get them out of here. We'll let you go this time. But if you whisper one word of what you heard here tonight... Lads, do you think I could be the devil? We know who you are. And who am I, lads? You're our brother. Get here right now! I'm tired of it! I've been doing it a long time! Shake hands! There, now, that didn't hurt too much, did it? They've done it this time, Law and his bunch of cutthroats. People gonna believe these lies? Well, not from this first issue, but if they keep printing the same thing, you know the power of repetition. What do you recommend? We've got to hire lawyers, get ourselves an injunction. They can stall us in the courts. They can get delays, they can get changes of venue. And during all that, they just keep printing away. What do you recommend? To the city marshal, greeting. The Nauvoo Expositor has been declared a public nuisance. You are hereby commanded to destroy the printing press operated by William and Wilson Law. Signed, Joseph Smith, Mayor of Nauvoo. of the First Amendment to the Constitution. He must feel the heavy arm of the law. Language here is awfully strong. Libel is against the law too, you know. Governor, either you see that Joe Smith is arrested according to this warrant, or we'll serve it ourselves. Are you threatening me, gentlemen? Won't be the first time we took the law into our own hands. We put you into office, Governor. You owe us something. Don't forget it. I'll, uh, see what I can do. Governor, swear it. On the Bible. Swear. I swear that you and your brethren will get a fair trial. like a desperate character to you, gentlemen. Very true, gentlemen. You cannot see what is in my heart. But I can see what is in your hearts. And I will tell you what I see. 
I can see that you thirst for blood. And nothing but my blood will satisfy you. And inasmuch as you and the people thirst for blood, I prophesy in the name of the Lord that you shall witness scenes of blood and destruction to your entire satisfaction. I say by the authority of Jesus Christ that not many years shall pass away before the United States shall present such a scene of blood and destruction as has not a parallel in the history of our nation. For behold, the southern states shall rise up against the northern states. And thus, with the sword and with bloodshed, the inhabitants of the earth shall mourn. Friends are getting lonely for you. I met with Governor Ford before turning myself in. He gave me his word that we'd get a fair trial. Can you trust his word? Governor Ford's a religious man. He gave his pledge on the Bible. What I cannot understand is why they hate us. We haven't stolen their land. It was a worthless swamp we took over. We pay state taxes. Why? What have they done? They look like pretty nice people to me, especially their leader. Right in here, Governor. Wait outside. I warned you to walk carefully and stay out of politics. Governor, we are threatened no matter what we do. You shouldn't have destroyed that printing press. I had the choice of smashing William Law's head or his press. I chose the lesser of two evils. The law will have to take its course. You'll have to stand trial. Here in Carthage? With that lynch mob downstairs? What kind of a trial do you think we'd have, Governor? I didn't call out that rabble. We'll try to get you a change of venue. In the meantime, Keep your people in Nauvoo away from here. I don't see Brigham Young about. He's back east. I'm keeping him there. If he knew I was in jail, no one could control him. There are rumors he's coming to break you loose. They are false. As you can see, I am still here, a prisoner, and my people are still in Nauvoo. Now, we gave ourselves up and came here unescorted because of your promise of a fair trial. You keep your word, and I'll keep mine. One moment, Governor. We're only safe here so long as you're in Carthage. You won't leave us behind. You have my solemn promise, Mr. Smith, that when I leave Carthage, you and your brethren will accompany me. Thank you, Governor. Would you see that Governor Ford receives this, please? Governor's dawn. God. Where? Back to Capitol, I guess. Left early this morning. Did he leave any word for us? His last words were, don't forget to vote for me next election, boys. Look at him. Must be a hundred of them. Oh, 
you cut me up short. Ah, but there were some good days. time to reload. I want you to do exactly as I do. another five minutes. I wish we were home already. Brother William, what are you doing here? I've got bad news. Go ahead, say it. Joseph is dead. Murdered. I was a fool to leave Missouri. I had a good business there. By now, it would have been great. I've got a good business here now. And I'm not going to make a fresh start every time you have to hit the trail again. When are you leaving? Soon. Sooner than you think. Where to? This time, beyond the Rockies. We'll find a place no one wants, and that's where we'll build. Good luck to you. I'll bring the message that you'll be out before Easter, right? Wish you and Claire could come with us, Samuel. Not this time. And I've told Claire the same. Good night, Marianne. Brigham. Good night, Samuel. Joseph lived and died a prophet and sealed his testimony with his blood. He did not intend for us to worship him, but to worship our God. Joseph is dead, but the church lives. The church will live and thrive so long as the family of man shall survive on this earth. Brigham was content to walk in Joseph's steps. He never thought he would have to wear Joseph's shoes.
Good evening, Samuel. Sit yourself down. How's my wife and children? As well as the rest of us. She chose the church above me. You forced her to choose. Well, how do you think that makes a man feel? I wouldn't know. I got no doubt as to how I'd choose. Yeah, that's easy for you. You're a believer. I wasn't always a believer, Samuel. I had to learn. I've learned all I want to know about God. I don't believe there ever was such a being. Otherwise, you people wouldn't be out in this wilderness. Samuel, have you come to join us or to take your wife home? Neither. I came to be with Claire. Fine. She's right here in the wagon. Visitors. Captain Allen, United States Cavalry. To what do we owe this pleasure, Captain? The United States has declared war on Mexico. Sorry to hear it. Your country is at war, Mr. Young. I'm still sorry to hear it. Sorry? This is a glorious opportunity to free Texas and California. War is never glorious, Captain. Except perhaps for the generals. The president has authorized me to enlist 500 of your men to form a battalion to march to California for the protection of the interests of the United States of America. I suppose you'd like the youngest and the strongest, eh? We want them for one year. We supply their uniforms, they receive full army pay, and when they've mustered out in California, they can keep their arms. I'll have to take it up with a council of 12. Come now, Mr. Young. Your reputation has traveled ahead of you. We know that your word is law. There are no servants here. Every man is a full priest in his own right and can make his own decision. Brigham here never gives an order unless he knows it's in a man's heart to obey. When can I expect your answer, Mr. Young? Where are you from, Captain? Virginia. We're giving you those 500 men, Captain. Not because I have any respect for the President of the United States or most of the crooks around him in Washington. We're giving you those men because we believe in our country and its constitution. We live and pray for the day when there'll be a godly man in high office. I don't care what a man's religion is, but the president of the United States has to have more than brains and ability. He has to have a soul. A soul, Captain.
is it, Heber. Not a sign of man. We'll plant roots. Deep roots. You're sick. You can't get up. It's only noon. We can have five, five acres of potatoes planted before the sun goes down. Can it wait till tomorrow? Tomorrow we can plant five acres of corn. <laughs> can buy land here because no one has any to sell. Every man shall be measured out his fair share, but he must cultivate it to keep it. There'll be no private ownership of the streams that flow down the canyons, nor the timber on the hillsides. These belong to the people, all the people. this harvest we cannot live another winter. We're 1,500 miles from the closest food supply. What have we done to deserve this further persecution? This time not from the Gentiles and their mobs. This time it is an act of God. The God who controls all of nature. Not a day passes I haven't spoken to you. If I am unworthy, tell me. One word. That's all I ask. 
one word. Young to grant us an interview, don't you think, Senator? This is his territory. He sets protocol. I wish it understood that your answers to my questions will be taken down by my secretary and submitted to a congressional inquiry in Washington. Why this congressional inquiry, Senator? What have we done now? The prevailing opinion in the Capitol is that your church cannot be trusted. Their loyalty is in question. Some members use the word priest. We came 2,000 miles to be left alone. Does that sound like treason to you? I didn't come with answers, Mr. Yarg. Only questions. What is the position of your church with respect to slavery? Our prophet Joseph expressed it, free the black man. The government can compensate the slave owners by selling public land. If Utah is admitted as a state, will it be a slave state? No, Utah is not adapted to slave labor. I consider it accursed to its masters. Well, now I come to the grave question over which the whole Christian world is at war with. Polygamy.
What is the largest number of wives married to any one man? I have the most, 15. Excuse me, I count 16. I dance with one wife twice, my first wife. Well, how do the women feel about this? We have no spinsters nor old maids. Every woman able can enjoy motherhood. Widows become wives again, and orphans gain fathers. We hold it's better for a woman to become the third wife of a loving husband, rather than the only wife of a bum who beats her. And it gives women a choice. The first wife must approve of all the other wives. Finally, Senator, you won't find a single whorehouse. For that, you have to go to the Gentile section. Mr. Young, may I change that word to brothel? Garbage is garbage, no matter what you call it. No, young man, you may not change that word. Gentlemen, dinner is served. Boys and girls, what day is tomorrow? Saturday! Come get your pennies. Pennies for candy. Tomorrow, a dollar for shoes. Then five dollars for hats. Then ten dollars for suits. Then they marry. That's when they really put me on the rack. Do you know what a farm needs, Senator? How much it costs to run a farm? A farm needs tools. Cows, pigs, chickens, seed, feed. There's no end to it. You getting all this down, young man? Yes, Your Excellency. You can truthfully say that you've observed firsthand that polygamy is not mere fornication. No, young man, you may not change that word. <laughs> Thought he was in Texas. Since Mexico had to give up Texas, he's come north. Figures it's easier pickings here. Can you find him? It's Chief Walker. You run up a battalion and we'll chase him back to Texas. I just want to meet him. Chief, how can we be friends? Suppose we try talking about it. We have plenty of food in Salt Lake City. You're welcome to all you need. I am not begging. We grew it on what you might call Indian land. We figure you got a right to share. What we want, we take. report that this was the work of Chief Walker. It was, Colonel, in retaliation for the two braves Captain Hildreth killed when they came to beg for food. The men killed here, Mr. Young, were surveyors, engineers. They had nothing to do with Captain Hildreth. You treat all Indians the same. To them, all blue coats are alike. 
The law will be answered. They will be punished. <laughs> And you got Chief Walker holed up in the mountains. That's the only way out. I told you, Chief Walker's a dead man. I'm going up. Try and find him. He's your brother, not mine. Chief, try a fresh one. pistols, every gun you got up here. My men will carry them down. You can follow us with your braves. Unarmed, the soldiers won't shoot you. Uh, no, no shoot. What's the end? You're a dying race. It's change or die. You've got to change. Why? Why is I'm not your friend, Chief. I just don't hate anybody. I, I like hate. You make me strong. Love is better. It makes you stronger. Let's go, Chief. cost the government a lot of money for room and board. Would have been far better to let them starve. You really enjoy being a soldier, don't you, Colonel? It's the oldest profession and the most honorable. No, Colonel. There's one a little older and just about as honorable. Chain them up. These Indians are coming with us. They're my prisoners. I will take them. Colonel, not only am I governor of this territory, but I'm Indian superintendent as well. I only take my orders from my military superiors. In Utah, I am your superior. You're dismissed, Colonel. You've not heard the last of this, Mr. Young. Let's go. I, I am now your prisoner. Feed me, my wife, my family, and I like these cigars.
Take me into the church. Welcome, Brother Samuel. Married in the church, sealed for eternity. We never had the chance. It's not too late, Samuel. Samuel Rudley, you take the hand of Marianne Young as if she were your own Claire Rudley. And Marianne, you take the hand of Samuel Rudley as if you were Claire. Do you, Samuel, accept Claire as your eternal partner and promise to be true and faithful to her? and to join with her in following the commandments of God and leading your family in righteousness? Yes. Do you, Marianne, acting for Claire, accept Samuel as an eternal partner, promise to be true and faithful to him, and to join with him in following the commandments of God and leading your family in righteousness? Yes. seen it when God had it alone. <laughs> 